pasta. Thought maybe everybody could benefit from uh, this lesson. Now, traditionally, pasta would be made with flour, eggs, salt, you know, and uh, maybe some water. But um, I don't need eggs, so I'm going to give you some other options. Okay, I can also attach a recipe uh, for your basic egg pasta as well. It's super simple. Uh, exact same principles that we're going to use here today. So the first recipe we're going to do is going to be using an egg replacer. Okay, so this is basically just to replace the egg in the recipe uh, for the protein, and then we're going to add a little olive oil too for some fat. Uh, we're using something called semola flour. Um, I learned this from a chef in Italy. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Okay, it's kind of like a cross between semolina and regular flour ground super fine. Um, it makes a, a lovely textured pasta. Uh, I don't do it any other way now. Okay, so that's the first one we're gonna make. All right, so we're gonna start with the first one. So just the 100% semola using our egg replacer. We're going to use a food processor, guys, okay? Now you could do this recipe by hand in a bowl, you know, do the old well technique where you put, uh, you've probably seen this before, where they put the egg in the center and then slowly incorporate the wet into the dry. Uh, but what we're going to do is use the food processor. It's going to save us energy, time, and it's actually going to help with something called gluten development. Okay, so it's going to work this dough faster than we ever could with our hands um, and help create a stretchier, more adhesive pasta dough at the end. Okay, so I'm going to start with the semola flour, which I have uh, 275 grams for this part of the recipe. Okay, semola flour and the processor. If you don't have a scale and you're going to do any type of baking and you know cooking in general, I do recommend getting just a standard food scale that you can use. It's so much more efficient for some weights. Some recipes will have you know measuring in cups, teaspoons, whatever. Um, but when you get into things like bread and other pastries, weighing it is much more accurate. Okay. So flour is in the blender. I'm going to get a little pinch of salt. That turmeric. What was it for? Just a little bit of yellow color. It's also an excellent antioxidant, extremely good for you. And a little bit will give color, but doesn't really affect the flavor, okay? Straight to this mixture, we're gonna add our egg replacer. Two tablespoons, okay? Make sure the level. Now, before I add the rest of the ingredients, I just want to make sure that's all mixed together evenly, okay? So I'm going to put my food processor top on. Let's give it a couple of pulses. All right, so that's a little bit more well incorporated. Um, now, before I go and add the, the fat and continue, I just want to back up to the egg replacer, okay? So there's a lot of different uh, versions of this on the market. And the one thing you want to be um, sure to look at is the ratio on the back of the package will have some directions as to um, calculating your ratio. So for instance, this bag here says one tablespoon of egg replacer with two tablespoons of water will equal um, the replacement of one whole egg. Okay. Now that might vary from, you know, from brand to brand. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, you know, but that's extra information here. If you follow this, I ensure you it will work. Okay. All right, now I've got my water here. Now, t sometimes you could take the egg replacer and dissolve it in there and then add it in, but I found with this recipe that this works just as well. So you can go either way, all right? I'm gonna add in my water. And then two tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, water was one quarter cup. Here's our extra fat. This is taking, you know, place of the egg yolk, which is you get all that nutritional fat, okay? Our lid back on, and we're gonna combine. And let it mix thoroughly until it starts to come to a point where it starts to almost kind of dough together. So I started with the one quarter cup of water. 
It's still kind of loose, so now I'm going to add my second quarter cup of water. Uh, I find every batch is slightly different, so you might have to adjust the amount of water that you add. You can see it's starting to come together, but I really want it to start to ball up. It's almost there. It just needs a little bit more water. So this is where the chef part comes in. I want to improvise a little bit. Just get a little bit of water. Get your processor moving. And then slowly add in just a little bit at a time until we reach that point where the dough was where we want it to be. Yeah, see that? Now, semola flour has less starch in your AP, so this can actually take a little bit more water than some of the other recipes. And there we go. Now it's starting to ball up into one little bit on the side and go around. That's what we're looking for. Once you get to this stage, stop your processor. Take a look at it, it's nice and spongy. Now we're ready to pop it out onto the counter. Uh, proceed to knead it. All right, so it just removes this dough, guys. It's all held together. That's what you want. This feels like it might be a tad bit wet, but that's okay. We're still gonna add more flour to the dough when we knead it, okay? Good indication is that your uh, mixer is nice and clean. Everything can, there's not a lot of bits of dough stuck in there. That means that you've done this properly, okay? So set that aside, get it ready for the next batch. You will lay this out on a nice clean countertop. Use uh, some AP or some or a combination of that and some more semola, whatever you have, or just AP flour. Get some on your hands, get some on the countertop, and roll the dough around. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna knead. So we're gonna like fold over, push, fold over and push. And we're gonna work this dough for about, you know, four, five, six minutes. It's gonna vary. What we're really looking to do is make sure we have a nice, smooth dough. Okay, if it starts to stick a little bit, add a little bit more flour. What we're doing here is gluten development. Okay, so it's gonna give the dough its elasticity and make it stick together. I'm gonna to go to roll our pasta later. All right, so I took a short break there and now you're gonna be uh, about five to almost eight minutes in of kneading. You want to get the dough nice and smooth, okay? Nice consistency. And you know what you do at this point is you, you roll it into a ball. It shouldn't have any breaks in it, okay? That means that you've kneaded it enough. If you see that it's breaking around the edges, it means it needs more time for gluten development, more kneading. Once you have it all balled up, now we have to let it rest. So the rules with pasta dough, generally you want to let it rest for at least half an hour before you use it. Now you can make it a day in advance, put it in the fridge. If it lasts in your fridge for a couple of days, you can come back to it later. Only thing I, I do suggest is if it does go in the fridge, make sure you pull it out and let it sit out for maybe about 45 minutes before you work with it so that it comes to room temp, all right? Otherwise it's completely different texture to work with with it straight out of the fridge. So I'm just gonna wrap that up. Some pasta crap. And I'm gonna pop this one in the fridge.